What's up everyone, Tom here, and today we're gonna look at Prusa Control. That's a piece of software that Joe Prusa or the Prusa research team released as a beta, so as an, as an unfinished software. And it is a new or different way of preparing your 3D files for 3D printing. And instead of what you typically see where a manufacturer would release a new piece of software and tack on all these features, Prusa Control is actually a software that takes away features compared to the full slick VR Prusa edition they've already released. It's still using the exact same backend behind the software, so the print results and the G-code you generate from both of these should be identical between Prusa Control and the full slick VR. So let's have a look at what features you actually get in Prusa Control. It is, again, it is based on slick VR, so a few things will look familiar. First up up here, you get to select which material you're printing with. You get to choose the quality, layer height basically, infill, low or high, support material on or off, and whether you want to print a brim or not. That is literally all you get. That is all the settings you get in Prusa Control. And I don't know, for me, it feels like that's enough. That is okay for day-to-day -day use. I've personally been happy with the profiles Prusa gives you in SlickCR. And, you know, for, for just daily printing, I'd be happy with that as well. But feel free to discuss that in the comments. So basic workflow is the same. You drag your model in. In this case, we're going to use the common tree frog. And right away, we can see this warning down here popping up. Scene is hard to print without supports. Um, that's actually an upgrade over the regular slick VR, Cura, etc. Because it looks at the model and it detects... Whoop, there we go. It detects that there down here there are overhangs that are past, I think it's 45 or 50 degrees for, for this version, um, that might be hard to print. And that is true, that belly of the frog is somewhat hard to print. And that's exactly what the warning is saying. So we turn on support everywhere and the push control software is happy. But actually, I know this model is going to print well, so we're going to turn that off. What's also a lot easier versus the Slick Theory Prusa Edition is just manipulating your, your files, your 3D model. So you click these, you get all the info on position, on rotation, scale, etc. And you get a few tools to directly you know, manipulate these. You get to scale it up or down. You can rotate it. So you drag this handle on the outside. You can like finely rotate it on the inside. It snaps to these 45 degree positions. So that's nicely implemented. What I'm still missing is, for example, when a part comes like this, when it's exported wrong from your CAD model, um, you don't get like a dial to rotate it into the correct position or even a snap to build plate feature like Cura has it. So maybe in a future release, we're gonna see that a bit easier. For now, you can just punch it in directly and rotate it to the correct position there. For scaling, you see at what percentage your part is, you can switch it to millimeters and punch in a direct millimeter value right there. That's good. And yeah, we're seeing another warning right here for better adhesion turn brim parameter on. That warning also seems to still be a bit buggy because it only appeared when we flipped the frog onto its back and is now disappearing. Another one would be if you move it outside the printable area, it's telling us, yeah, okay, it's out of the printable area. So that's the base functionality of the Prusa Control software. A few nice details is, for example, if you pick a different material, if you pick a wood fill, um, you see you get different quality options, like the ultra detail 0.05 millimeter setting disappeared. If we switch back to PLA, we get that setting back. So to a certain extent, it keeps you from making bad printing decisions. Let's see what, what ABS does. Yeah, it also takes away the 0.05 millimeter one since ABS just likes to curl a lot um, since it's printed without a part cooling fan. So one thing that's nice about Prusa Control is that it actually has a back button. So that is for transforming models mostly. So if you move it into a wrong spot, you can go back and it's gonna reset it. You can also just reset the entire thing to you know how it was imported. So when you hit generate, it slices the part, it generates the G-code preview that you're gonna see in a second. And yeah, that's what that looks like. I would like to take this moment and point out that there are print time estimate and filament use numbers down here. This is marvelous. I don't know why the stock slick there does not have this feature. It's not the nicest preview I've ever seen. It just shows you a single layer. It's like this 2D rendering. But what's nice about this preview right here is you can hit this plus and you add a color change point. And that's gonna stay in the print. And when you export, um, the printer is actually gonna pause at this layer and it's gonna allow you to change the filament in your printer. So you'd print the lower half with one then switch and print the upper half with a different filament. 
So one thing I've noticed is that the Prusa control right now is still a lot slower than the full slick theory. So if you go back to the default settings, go on PLA with 0.15, standard infill, no support, no brim. We hit generate, three, two, one, go. And then of course it generates the preview. So the slicing itself is like three or four seconds and the preview in total is like six, seven seconds. If we do the same thing in the full slick theory, Let's import the same tree frog right there. And we hit slice now, just keep an eye on the progress bar down here, slice now. That's done. That was less than a second. And we get the full 3D preview with the nicely rendered out extrusion lines that are actually like 3D representations of what the thing is gonna look like. And the full slick throw just feels a, a lot snappier. If you wanna compare this again, let's load in the Adelinda model. This is a, a lot larger model and again it says, um, you might want to turn on brim and it's hard to print without supports, but let's just generate it as is without any of those because I know again, that's gonna be printing fine. And that's gonna take a few seconds. So exporting G-code, the slicing is done, but I'm not sure where exactly it exports it to. Okay, generating G-code preview. That was like, I don't know, 15 seconds of total processing time. If we do the same thing in slick VR, slice now. It still takes a bit, but that was like five seconds or so for the entire thing. And now we're ready to export. Of course, once you hit export, that is gonna take another bit of time. So I'm not sure how comparable it is, but Prusa Control just at this moment feels slower, especially since it's still generating the G-code preview in the background. Let's just let that finish. There we go. Performance with the preview isn't great either. This feels like it just dropped down to like 20 frames per second. Um, of course, once we go further up with less lines rendered, it's smooth again. But right here, it's, you know, when, when you have a more complex scene, you will definitely see a performance hit. Now, of course, you can still import several models at the same time. You don't have that multiply function that uh, Slick Theory has. So you can drag and drop several models in. It auto arranges them if you want, and it then, you know, prints it at the same time. Once you have a full plate of parts that you're happy with, that you want to print like at a later date and change the settings around, you can do export or save project, and it's just going to save everything that's on your print plate as you know a project you can load it up later again and get that exact same arrangement it does not save your print settings though but those aren't that hard to remember now the settings you get in here again they are dependent of the material you choose and they are not hard coded into the software so you could go into the json files um, in the program install folder and change them around you could even add different printers like if you go into the settings all we get is the mark ii right now so i suppose um, that's going to get a few more options when Prusa releases more printers. I don't know. Um, the only other option is to choose your nozzle diameter and, you know, auto update parameters that actually supposedly downloads fresh print profiles from Prusa once new ones become available, once tweaked ones become available. But there is, right now, there is no options for you to say go into SlickVR, um, grab your filament profile and say file export and then just import it into. Prusa control, that is not possible yet. Maybe in a future version that's gonna be possible, but I feel like if you have the skills to tune in your own slick theory profiles, you probably wouldn't want to import them into Prusa control. Maybe if, you, if you're giving out your printer to someone and want them to have different profiles that are maybe tweaked a bit differently, but for now you're just stuck with the profiles that are baked into Prusa control. Now these profiles are good, and again, I would be happy printing with these pretty much any day when testing filaments, of course, I do want to tweak a few things here and there, but the most important stuff is there. Like, like when I'm using slick theory on a daily basis, the one setting I change is I'd head in over here and uh, change the infill ratio. That's like the one thing I actually need in slick theory that is not broken out um, in these profiles right here. And here is just another setting they can easily change. So that's good. And again, I'd be perfectly happy printing with Prusa control exclusively. Now, it is an undeniable trend that more and more 3D printers go towards that easy to use moniker, that they're taking away settings or at least hiding them from you if you don't really need them. For example, Ultimaker with the Ultimaker 3 and Cura 2 has been going down that route where they have Cura and you get these same settings. You get your material, you get your print quality, your infill, 
and whether you want support or not, and that is it, unless you enable all the other settings. Printabot has been doing it with the Simple Pro, where it's basically a cloud-based Wi-Fi connected interface that gives you even less options than what Prusa Control gets you. And I think both of these developments and Prusa Control are good because if you want to, you can dig in and you can change more options, but it means you don't have to do that. You don't have to be that skilled tweaker, tuner, hobbyist to make good use of a 3D printer anymore. Point in case, uh, for the Printabot Simple Pro, which I'm gonna post a review of later this week, um, I gave that out to my sister, she's 11. She's been having great fun using that machine with just the cloud interface. Like I wouldn't want her to use the full Slickware or having her use that full program. I could teach her how to do it, but a web interface or some sort of an interface that is just simpler for, for her, um, why not? Because if you have the right profiles in there, if those profiles are well tweaked and in Printabot's case, in Ultimaker's case, and in Prusa's case, they are amazing. They, you know, I have no need to tweak those. In that case, you know, you, you give people that don't want that complex, that huge software behind them, it gives more people the option to use a 3D printer well, because they don't have that threshold of having to learn the software first or having to navigate complex menus. You know, you drag in your 3D models, um, you scale it up or down if you want to, and then you hit generate, export G-code, and you have a file that prints incredibly well. And what I like about Pusha Control here is that it's, you know, it's in its early stage. It's showing some basics right here of what could be a lot better still. Um, but like those warnings, scene is hard to print without supports. Um, there might be too little contact area to the print bed. Those are the mistakes that you have to explain to newbie users. And it's going to be something they will actively have to keep in mind and remembering when they use the 3D printer for their first, I don't know, 100 prints or, or more even. And in this case, the software just says, okay, here, um, you might want to consider these two things. What I'd like to see more, for example, is when you have a PET or a copolyester of any other kind, that it just tells you, okay, um, you might want to apply something to your print bed so that it doesn't rip up your PEI sheet. That could be something that's like super easily implemented, I think. And maybe down the road, something like that auto orient, auto lay flat onto the build plate, like suggesting, okay, um, you might want to rotate it and uh, lay it flat onto your bed, instead of just saying you might want to add support and brim, because that's, that's usually not the right answer. But so far, Prusa Control, I'd give it a thumbs up. I think it is a good step in the right direction, even though, you know, there are a few things that are still buggy, that are still not working out um, quite as smooth as they could but it is definitely a step in the right direction. And again, it is still running that powerful SlickVR Prusa Edition in the back end, and you can always jump back into that Prusa Edition slicer SlickVR and, you know, tweak to your heart's content. I don't think the SlickVR Prusa Edition is gonna disappear anytime soon, because again, that they need that software to be good for Prusa Control to run well too. Prusa Control 100% depends on Slick 3 or Prusa Edition being good. So that's always gonna be there if you wanna go in and tweak. So yeah, I'm excited for this development. I love seeing these things being simplified and being made more accessible. So let me know in the comments below, is this something you like seeing? Is this a development you, you enjoy? For me personally, I will be sticking to Slick Theory Prusa Edition for now because it just has all the options I, I maybe want to tweak at some point. And the usability penalties don't really affect me that much because I, I, I think I know what I'm doing. But now having something like Prusa Control available for the Mark II means that machine now gets lifted into that realm of machines that I can lend out to people like my sister who doesn't have the heaviest technical back and I think she'd be able to use the Mark II without learning the full slick VR workflow and all the details behind that and it just makes the entire workflow a bit easier and more accessible which I think is always a good thing. So just a quick look at Prusa Control again it is still in beta it's an unfinished software there is going to be a final release sometime I don't know when exactly but I think it has a lot of potential and I think it is a good step in the right direction and like as of right now it is a perfectly usable software with a few quirks. Alright that's gonna be it for today thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.